celebrate your independence. Uh, let me just make a few announcements before we start our session. Everything that uh, you need to uh, know as far as local service is concerned will be here. We have six uh, hymns that uh, I'm told are quite familiar to all of you. Now the, uh, the uh, uh, letters in bold during the liturgy are the response of the congregation. Let's see what else. Uh, keep these books. Now, uh, what's going to, uh, for our communion, it will be by intention. Does everyone know who that is? Okay, I see not, uh, it's not in the law. But uh, what will happen is there will be two, two stations in the front. By intention, I mean you uh, are given the, uh, the bread and you are to dip it in the uh, chalice of wine before you eat it. Now, if you happen to put it in your mouth and you're used to, just go ahead and ask for another one. Okay? And as you will know, right after the, uh, the uh, worship service, uh, we're invited to a luncheon all breakfast school. Any questions? A, a third, there will be one station here, one station there, and then uh, the, uh, the flow of the communion uh, uh, service will be from the back to the front, and then on out the sides, and so on. I will have a third uh, communion station up in the back to serve those who are on the balcony and whoever else might be uh, in that area. Okay. So, please rise as we begin our worship service. We gather in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. In Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us not confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are in one sin and cannot do our
Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Then calling the name, calling the saints and widows, he showed her to 
be alive. This became known throughout Joppa, and many believed in the Lord. Meanwhile, he stayed in Joppa for some time, with a certain Simon, a tanner. The Gospel, of, I mean, Word of the Lord. Let's raise our voices together and sing praise to the Lord, the Almighty. You may remain seated. <laughs> Throne. 
and around the elders and the glory of the creatures, and they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing Amen and blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these, robed in white, and where have they come from? And he said to him, Sir, you are the one that knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason, they are before the throne of God and worship Him day and night in His temple. And the one who is seated at the throne shall shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them nor the scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. And he will guide them to springs of water of life. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's join our voices once again together and sing thine is the Lord.
you turn this other microphone off on my hip. It doesn't really work right. The Holy Gospel this Sunday comes from the Gospel of John, the 10th chapter. At that time, the festival of the dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. I give them eternal life, and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and our Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. It is a pleasure to be with you this morning and I bring you greetings from the other 134 congregations and missions and worshiping communities that are part of our southwestern Texas Synod. The congregations in this Synod range from less than a year old to over 160 years old and are in the most rural areas to the most urban areas and everywhere in between. But no matter where they're located, every congregation is called by God to be the presence of Jesus Christ in that community. And for you, a hundred years of service to this community is a milestone well worth celebrating. Congratulations to you this day. And I look forward not only to our time in worship here together, but for our meal and fellowship as well. Let us pray. Lord God, you sent your Son to be the shepherd of the sheep, the one whose voice you are called to follow. You call us to be your people, to help to have the Lord's voice be heard in specific places and communities like shepherds in the world. We ask your blessings this day on St. John Lutheran. That as they celebrate their 100th anniversary and the abundant blessings of God, that they may be a means whereby this community is blessed and God's kingdom grows. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. How do people get to know us? Well, by the way we dress, I think, sometimes. At least on some occasions. After all, police officers have their uniforms, doctors wear white coats, pastors wear collars. But we can be easily fooled if we go only by appearances. That's one thing that masquerade balls are all about, dressing up like someone else, pretending you are someone special when you are not. No, I think people get to know us by wearing both what we do and who we are. Let me explain. Anybody can put on a baseball uniform and pretend to be a baseball player. They might look like one, after all, but it's in the hitting and the throwing and the running in the things that they did that would either show them to be a major leader or a major fraud. So it's by the things that they could do, or in this case, maybe not do, that people would know if they were a baseball player or not. But the other way people might know is if that person ran out on the field with the rest of the team, the rest of the team just looked at them funny, didn't go over to greet them, didn't talk to them, didn't know pretty quickly. That person, despite the fact they might be dressed the same, they're not a part of the same team because we're also known by our relationship with others. 
And in our gospel lesson today, the people ask Jesus a very pointed, who are you, question. They said, if you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. And Jesus answers that he is, both by what he does and by whose he is. You know, in our gospel lesson today, Jesus says, the works I do in my Father's name, they testify to me, but you don't believe because you are not a part of my sheep. Jesus is saying that they should be able to know him by his deeds, by the way that he lives his life. And those deeds were for all people to see. He was healing the sick and forgiving the sinner and feeding the hungry and bringing sight to the blind and exercising the possessed. And finally, at the end of his time on earth, by his dying on the cross and by his being raised from the dead, all those deeds should have been a clear testimony to those who questioned them about who he was. But they did not believe. And that really shouldn't surprise us much either. As we read through the Old Testament, we find many situations where the people of God viewed God's deeds all around them. Things like freeing them from slavery in Egypt, helping them possess the promised land, sending many prophets to guide them. And still, they did not know God. And so it is now with Jesus. They don't know Him because they don't believe, and they don't believe because they're not a part of His sheep. They don't know His voice. Well, all those people who listened to Jesus, but they didn't know Him. They kept asking for some kind of proof. They kept asking that, that they might see something when in fact it was all around them. They just didn't open their eyes to see it. They didn't open their ears to hear it. Yes, they didn't know the shepherd's voice. And we need to ask ourselves, I think, do we know the shepherd's voice? As God's people who read about his needs, we certainly turn to God in prayer. We confess our faith in God. We need to ask the question too, do we really know Him? Do we hear Him and do we follow Him? Because if we do, then our deeds should reflect it. Because just as Jesus was known by His deeds, so we are known by ours. If some stranger should come here to this community of Bishop, Texas, and ask someone, what kind of church is that St. John Lutheran down there on the corner? What can you tell me about it? Would that person in this community be able to tell them some of the deeds that reflect you, the good that you do in this community, the way that you share your talents with your neighbors, the manner in which your love for God and for one another can be seen by the people around you? Well, I hope they'd be able to tell them that and many more things about who you are as God's people in this place so that people would see Jesus because of your deeds, because of the way you live here in this place. Well, remember, that's just one part of helping people know who we are by our deeds. Because Jesus also answered the question by saying who he was. Remember? He said, the Father and I are one. That's an important component for us to remember this day. That we are connected to God. Because that's how Jesus identified himself. Not only did his deeds show that he was God's son, but in a sense, Jesus' very being demanded it. Because who else could be one with the Father except the Christ, except the Messiah? And yet people still don't believe. Our gospel lesson today ends at verse 30. We don't have verse 31. You know what it says? And then the Jews took up stones in order to stone him. Not only did they believe, in their ignorance they were going to get rid of him. 
because they didn't like what he had to say. They were not his sheep. And you know, these days we can have the same kind of problem. People might say about Aunt St. John Lutheran, who are you? Who are you at St. John Lutheran Church in this community? And you might share your hundred years of history in this place. You might talk about your worship times and the different kind of programs you had in the life of your congregation, the places where you were involved in the life of your community. And those are all very descriptive, but it really might be better for you to say, we're a gathering of the baptized and forgiven people of God. That's who we are. Because that answer tells them not what you're doing, it tells them whose you are. That you are God's children. That you've been claimed by baptism. Probably many of you at this spot, right here in front of you. And that it's God who sustains you each and every day for you to do the ministry to which God has called you. But like those who listen to Jesus, they may want proof. They may not believe you. And then they may ask hard questions. Questions like this. Well, if you really are the gathering of the children of God, how do you explain the fact that I heard about one of your members breaking the law this last week and got caught speeding? Oh, and what about that neighbor of mine who belonged to St. John Luther that hit his finger with a hammer and some really new words came out of his mouth. Or what about that one when I was on the lake last week and instead of being a worship there was one of St. John's members right next to me in the boat next door. How can you claim to be children of God and yet your life shows otherwise? You know, sometimes when we're so bluntly confronted by those kind of questions, we may begin to wonder about ourselves if we really are children of God. We may look at our life and the things that we do, and we may be tempted to say, you know, I guess I'm not a very good child of God after all. But don't be tempted to think that way. Because all of us, each and every one of us are pulled by sin away from God all the time. We are not perfect people. But then we don't have to be. We are God's children because God makes us His children. And He makes us His children, first of all, in those waters of baptism. He is our shepherd. And we are His sheep. And the really good news is that we have that same story of love and forgiveness not only that we've experienced in our life but which we share to all those people in the community around us because it was Jesus God's only perfect child who was the one who walked away at the cross and who died there and was raised from the dead so that we might be forgiven and we might be strengthened for service to others and that is important for us to remember as a church. We are not perfect, but we are God's children. You know, you celebrate a hundred years of ministry in this place today. It, this is a pattern in a place where many can remember over the years all of those saints who have been among you, who have lived that faith, and who by their deeds and by their words, remind you that you are children of God. And many of those people came to meet Jesus, not only in the waters of, the ba of baptism, but here at the altar, in the bread and wine of communion. And they sat in classes in their education building, and they learned about their faith, and, and they did work projects together, and they shared food together, and they were there to support one another in times of joy and in times of grief. You have been God's sheep in this place, caring for one another and being a witness to this community and letting people see Christ in you. 
You know, in the beginning of this sermon, I talked about how we sometimes can identify people maybe by the things they wear, like a baseball uniform. But I hope you've heard that we know people by their deeds and by their relationships. There's this wonderful story about Babe Ruth, one of the greatest baseball players of all time. At this point in his career, he had hit 714 home runs, and he was playing one of his last major league games. This aging star was playing for the Boston Braves at that point. It was a game against the Cincinnati Reds. But Bay was not as agile as he used to be. He fumbled the ball, he threw badly. In one inning alone, his errors counted for five Cincinnati runs. And at the end of that terrible inning, as he walked off the field, well, there were boos and there were catcalls through the whole stands all around him. And it's at that point that a, a young boy jumped out of the stands, ran across the field, and just grabbed the player's legs. Now, the Bay had a lot of choices to do at that point about what he would do to handle that. It wasn't a very good day. I'm sure he wasn't feeling really good about himself. But he picked up the little boy and hugged him, patted him on the head, sent him back to the stands. And the place grew quiet. Because the people saw in him at that point a kind of different kind of hero who, even though his deeds weren't very good that day, relationship with that little boy, we got to see who he really was inside. Well, Jesus, in word and in deed on a cross, reveals his identity to us. He shows us that he is the Messiah, that he is the Christ, that he is the great shepherd, and that he calls us to be his sheep. And you people of St. John, you are the sheep here in this place. And for a hundred years, by your deeds and by your actions, you've been able to show this community that Christ lives in you. This is only a beginning. You have a hundred years at least ahead of you. You've got work to do. We've all got work to do. Because what we trust is that we don't walk down that road alone. Jesus, the great shepherd, is going to be walking with us. Amen. Amen. Please rise as we sing our hymn of the day, which is, I know that I really know it.
Ladies and Lords of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten from the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, the God is not made.
together. Merciful Father, we don't want to destroy and kind of sin, but you have first given us ourselves, our time, and our possessions, signs of your gracious love, receiving them for the sake of him who offered himself for us. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
Chiefly dry. May the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace now and forever. Amen. Let us pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. And we pray that in your mercy you would strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And now the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. We sing our closing hymn.